Hi, I am Inder Rana. I'm a technology specialist with data and analytics focus area uh, working for Microsoft in the healthcare vertical. I, along with uh, a colleague of mine, Greg Beaumont, we have created this GitHub repository to demonstrate uh, Microsoft Fabric, which is an end-to-end -end analytics platform. In this repository, we have healthcare industry specific uh, samples and we have made an effort that these uh, data sets used uh, are real world data sets we have added a new module to this uh, repository which is for drug adverse event data set from uh, fda and in this video i'll walk you through how to set up this new sample we have just added uh, i will just cover the ingestion and the transformation data engineering part of the uh, solution. We should have another um, video shortly, which will cover the reporting. And the data cell itself is relatively large. There are 1400 plus files going back to 2004, so almost 20 years of data. And files are made available in zipped format, uh, but when you unzip them on disk, the JSON file size is about 400 plus GB. And uh, here I have I have a readme file for the for this particular module, um, I have a link to the FDA site. Again, just for your reference, you don't need to do anything manually. I'm just uh, showing you that this is the website from where we uh, downloaded the data set using code in the Spark notebooks. Um, this is the drug adverse event database data set. It is uh, close to 1500 files now. And let's see what else we have. I've described the solution here and we have Two, two Spark notebooks, the first one, the second one, these two. The first one um, downloads the files from uh, OpenFDA website and then unzips them. And the second one uh, reads the files, the unzipped JSON files and create Delta Parquet tables. And once you run those notebooks as part of a pipeline, uh, you will see the structure in your uh, in your lake house, there will be a, a folder. There will be two folders in the file sections, FD underscore data set. This will have the files uh, in the zipped files. And then this FD underscore data, data set underscore unzipped folder will have the unzipped files. Here I'm just showing one JSON file to give you an idea that uh, uh, JSON data is, is nested and complex and it's not very conducive to reporting. So that's where the the second notebook uh, reads it and create Delta Parquet tables, which look uh, like this. Um, just a preview over here, uh, which can be used for further consumption, um, which will be reporting and analytics. Uh, prerequisite is a fabric enabled workspace. And then at the bottom, I have these three links. Um, the first step, there's a page for each link here. First step is uh, creation of a lake house and setting up your Spark notebooks. Uh, second is creating of a pipeline to execute those Spark notebooks. Um, the execution, the, the setup itself doesn't take more than 10 to 15 minutes, but execution of those pipeline, the Spark notebooks can take up a few hours. In certain cases, it has completed in 2.5 hours. In certain cases, three hours. In certain cases, it has taken longer. So there are a lot of variables, but uh, pipelines we are using so that it's a background process. You just said define the pipeline, kick it off, and then walk away. In a few years, a few hours, you can come back and check the status of your pipeline. And if everything goes well, you will have the flattened tables, the three tables. And we have flattened most of the JSON data, except like handful of columns. Um, which are very deeply nested and will determine based on uh, need if you want to flatten those or not. So with that, I will just switch to my Fabric workspace. I am in a Fabric enabled workspace and I will just switch to the data engineering persona over here and I will create a lake house, FDA underscore lake house. So six, I've been creating quite a few lake houses with similar names, so just putting six to make it unique. And what I did was I just clicked this lake house. I switched to the data engineering persona and click lake house button over here to create a new lake house. And this should give me a lake house um, which has no tables, no files. So we're good. I'll just close it out. Um, the next step is to download the, um, the files. So this is all documented pretty well. I'm just uh, making it a little bit faster. If I go to the first uh, step over here, um, I have documented with screenshots what I just walked you through. I will just go to the uh, notebook right now and I'll click this download raw file icon. And the first notebook downloaded, I'll go back. I will do the same for the second one as well. Okay, good. So 
Now what I will do is I will go back to the home for that particular workspace. I'll click import notebook. I'll click upload and I can I have downloaded them multiple times. So I'll just select two notebooks with the appropriate name. Uh, import just takes a few seconds here. We should have the imported files. Yep, we do. Um, so this is an important step now. So when you import the notebooks, they have references to the lake house in my environment. So you will get an error message. So what you need to do is you need to fix the reference to a lake house in your environment. Uh, I will just open the notebook. In my case, you will not see the error because it's, it's a lake house which exists in my environment. Um, but in the GitHub repo I was just showing, it has a screenshot how it will look in your environment. So what you need to do is you just need to click here, this icon and say remove all lake houses, continue and then click add lake house. And then you select existing lake house, add. And here is the lake house I selected, add. So at this point, my first notebook is appropriately configured. So now I'll move on to the second notebook and do the same lake house this button remove all lake houses continue click add add existing lake house at lake house six if i find a better way i will make sure to document that you don't have to go through this remove and add step but i have not found any um, so i'll just close my notebook so now both of my notebooks are configured appropriately. So if we go back to the readme over here, the home readme, we have completed the first step. Now I'll just move on to the second. Actually, before I move on to the second step of creating the pipeline to execute these notebooks, let's go in there because there's one thing I would like to point out. Um, as you see, the notebooks are self-documenting. I have made sure that I add a markdown cell to explain what the notebook does. Also, you will find code um, com com comments in, in line with the code as well, explaining what's uh, what that uh, uh, notebook does. Uh, so if you're interesting, interested in understanding the details, and here is one more detail I would like to share. So FDA does make this uh, metadata JSON available, JSON file available, which describes all the data sets and the files contained in those data sets, and that's what my first Spark notebook parses to figure out which. Uh, how to download the the files or what are the URLs for those files as you see over here. Uh, this is the uh, URL for a zip file. So that's what it uh, parses and downloads it in the zip format and then it loops through and unzips those files which are picked by the second notebook. Um, we have the sources, raw JSON files and the destination uh, is uh, Delta Park Indians. So let's move on to the next one. This is creation of a pipeline. As I ex explained that the pipeline um, that that, that uh, Spark notebooks take a long time to execute, so it's better to run them as part of a pipeline. So that's what I will walk you through next here. So how I'll do this uh, is I will open the first notebook and I'll go to the run menu over here and I'll click add to pipeline and I'll click new pipeline. So I will say FDA data set dash pipeline six to make it unique and I'll click create. Um, this will open a pipeline canvas, pipeline design canvas. It will have one notebook activity and it's, I will just give it an appropriate name here. Download FDA data set. And I'll switch to settings. You will see that it is connected or configured with the appropriate notebook. Uh, the next thing I would like to do is uh, this is the first notebook. This is the first step of the pipeline. I need to add another notebook activity here, and this will be for create silver tables. And this time I will need to go to settings and I will need to pick the appropriate uh, notebook, the second notebook. And the other thing I need to do over here is I want to make sure that the create silver tables notebook runs only after the first notebook is complete. So I'll just draw the arrow from on success to this notebook, second notebook. So I just did it from on success to the create silver tables. And then I will just save my, my pipeline. So at this point, I have a pipeline defined and ready to go. Um, just for completeness, I will make sure that I'm not missing anything here. I am on the 
step two. I'll move on to the step three. Step three is pretty simple, just run. So I'll just go in there and click the run button. I'm not going to do it now. I have run quite a few of these pipelines um, before. So, and the other thing I point out over here is the pipelines run in as a background job. So you can walk away, close your fabric session, and you can monitor the status of your pipeline in the monitoring hub um, section of the fabric portal in case you're in an environment where there are a lot of users a lot of pipelines you might want to set up a filter where you say submitted by as yourself and then you can even put the name of the pipeline so in a few hours the pipeline should be complete and if it is complete uh, you will have uh, this kind of a structure showing up in your lake house and uh, lastly, few details around the data set. Uh, raw JSON files unzipped were about 400 GB, a um, little bit over 400 GB, but the table size on disk is only 15 to 20 GB. Uh, Delta Parquet tables are very compressed. And I give a little stats around the number of rows as well. Um, today is March 11th, and I think one or two days back, the data set was updated. So, um, so row count might be slightly off, but it's in the same ballpark. Um, hope this was helpful. So just to reiterate, this just covers the data engineering part, and we should have another video coming shortly, which will be about the reporting layer. Um, please feel free to post messages um, or I submit issues to the Fabric repo. Um, pull requests are more than welcome if you find certain improvement areas. Um, thank you so much.